Everyone, this is Ola and I'm back and I'm going to offer you the chance of a lifetime. I'm going to give you five After Effects quick tips for the price of one. That's right, if you walked into a shop and the shopkeeper asked if you would like five biscuits for the price of one, I think you'd bite his hand off, wouldn't you? You'd probably also wonder why he was selling one biscuit individually in the first place, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't argue with that and you'd just say thank you, give me those biscuits. So, biscuits aside, we're in After Effects and five tips which are going to improve your workflow and also um, improve the quality of your animations. Actually a lot of these, well all of these tips are aimed at increasing functionality and also um, the just making your life a lot easier to work with in After Effects. So I'm going to start straight away with a graph editor. Here we have a simple text coming in animation, enthralling. How can we make this any more interesting? Well, if possible, we're going to add an easy ease. And as you can see, it's slightly easing, but After Effects, by default, easy ease doesn't do a lot. And a lot of people would probably just leave it there. I've got my easy ease scheme frame, that's all I can do with it. Well, that's wrong, because if we go into the graph editor, pull that handle left, maybe pull this one up again, watch it again that's how it should look that's how an easy ease should look and I just really wanted to point this out because it annoys me when people look at that you have the kind of animation this time it kind of comes in starts speeds up slows down you might think this text has a bit of personality now because it's kind of wondering should I come in and then okay and then it stops and so I really just wanted to point out um, here are some examples actually how the you can just make your animations a lot more fun and organic by using the graph editor. I use the graph in all these to kind of play with the position and the speed of uh, which the text comes in. And I've also on all of these got the CC slant, which is how I'm getting this wobbly effect, which goes well with the font, I think. So it gives it a jelly like consistency. And we all love jelly. So there we go, the graph editor simple one to start off. This one is really cool and I think even if you're at an advanced level in After Effects you might not have thought about this. It's certainly one that I hadn't thought about and uh, one of my colleagues Mr. Byrne pointed this out to me when I started um, my current agency a while back and it's been one which I've used in many different ways actually since then so uh, hopefully you can think of good ways to use this. So we have a tree as you can see, this is not just any tree. This is an M and S tree. Now it's a very well drawn tree, and we have once again a very well drawn ball. And here we have depth of field ramp, which is literally just I'm going to change this to linear. It's just a ramp, a composition with a solid and a ramp. Now I've pre-composed this so that the adjustment layer above it, which has the lens blur effect, um, picks up on the uh, the white to black information inside it and uh, henceforth the iris shape will be drawn from the luminance of our ramp here so white would be to the tune of whatever the iris radius is so it would be completely blown out wherever it's white and where it's black we'll get no uh, blur whatsoever so the thing with this is you might want this blur to move you might want to uh, move your ramp around and see how it affects your composition. Obviously I have a really simple one here but imagine if this was a Z pass or anything else that you wanted to play with and as you can see I don't want to be jumping in between these two to see my results. So this is when the versatility of the After Effects layout comes into play. I'm going to lock this first composition and lock basically means no matter which composition I'm in here this will stay in the viewer which is very important for what we're about to do. Uh, then I'm going to click in here so this box is selected and go to new viewer and I'm going to lock this viewer also but uh, this time I'm going to have the ramp which is the depth of field uh, ramp so we have both of the compositions that I need basically and I'm going to drag this out to the right of the screen and I'm going to scale this down so now I have the ability to see not only my ramp but also the way in which, uh, in which it will affect my footage. So if I move my ramp around, 
you will now see that becomes blurred this becomes if I just wanted to blur half the screen I could do that and this will update and it's just such a useful kind of gotcha that um, about the After Effects layout and this is certainly coming very useful for me if I've just been doing kind of quick depth of field and I've just done it with a ramp and I just want to update it myself and see what it is real quick then this is the fastest way to do it I think so there that that's just the versatility of the layout really I'm going to unlock this so I can see my composition this next one is more related to when you have once again I'm going to play through this expertly done animation as you can see if your mind has not been blown and you're still with me um, we can understand that this is a composition with many simple shapes staggered in 3D space in After Effects and the old After Effects camera so uh, what is this about well imagine here I only have nine shapes excluding the camera imagine if this was a hundred shapes and they were staggered all around the screen and I wanted to select maybe the the magenta thing and maybe okay let's let's say this was a hundred layers and you could use tilde and find it in here but the fastest way to find this would be as long as you had it named properly would be right click select purple rectangle and this is just such a useful feature I use it all the time in Photoshop and I didn't realize until recently that After Effects had it also so as long as you right click over the layer you want the select will be context sensitive to wherever you clicked and the layers that are underneath wherever you clicked so we have the background obviously the lime green hex and the blue circle since I clicked here and as you can see blue circle lime hex background so that's just one thing I wanted to bring to your attention the other thing is if you have these things uh, staggered in 3D space you can uh, lots of people know this some people don't I'm going to bring it to your attention anyway there is custom view and custom view is so useful for seeing how your scene is actually set up as sometimes you might and if I press C here you might not be able to completely understand uh, in context what where where this blue circle is with that purple um, rectangle and if we switch this to two views and for this view we have the active camera that is just such a useful tool so you can see here and if I were to move this camera in here it will update in there and vice versa so I think that is I've been doing a project recently where this is coming very useful we have lots of hand drawn elements which I drew out myself scanned in and staggered in the After Effects uh, 3D space and uh, this is coming very useful for me just being able to tell how far things are apart and uh, how the camera is moving and where the light is in relation to all the layers and so how the shadows will come out and, and so forth now this this particular tip will um, if you like circles then you know I think you're gonna love this tip if you don't like circles I think you're gonna love it anyway because this is probably uh, one of the fastest ways to animate and also one of the coolest ways to animate here I have the aforementioned circle and see I wanted to animate this uh, maybe I had text or a scratch card maybe scratch card would be a good example so make a scratch card uh, I probably shouldn't have made it the same color actually so we have our scratch card there enthralling and I wanted to uh, you know animate this scratching out so I could I could like position and keyframe and uh, nah. okay I can see straight away that's going to take me ages so the fastest way to do this go up to window and bring out the motion sketch now if I press start capture next time I press on the screen you're gonna see this and it's also gonna I'm using a pen but this is also gonna record the speed at which I did this the accuracy and look at that <laughs> it's just it's just one of my favorite things in After Effects that has just mimicked if you're using a tablet this is literally a joy to use if you're using a mouse uh, I'm going to show you a feature in a second to maybe smooth out the animation I can also drag these out just by alt clicking the last frame so that would just slow the animation down just somewhat but just such a useful thing and if you're actually timing something to music and you want the ball to bounce around to music perfect 
this is the only way to do it for my money uh, you can also like I say if you are using a mouse and uh, your paths are a bit rough use the smoother and this will smooth your paths out if you don't have the smoother you can find it there and so that will just smooth out your animation make sure it's all lovely and organic so yeah I absolutely love that uh, use a motion sketch that's what I'm saying last but not least is the brainstorm feature which is one which gets overlooked really and this this is despite the fact that it's probably the closest After Effects will ever go to holding your hand and doing your job for you uh, if you're trying to create a background you would usually start with fractal noise because it is the most versatile plugin there's no doubt about it in the After Effects library there's literally very few things you can't create using fractal noise any effect built in uh, that you want to create in After Effects usually starts with fractal noise so uh, I have a simple animation here just um, running the evolution which is a times multiply 100 uh, expression which you can see there on the evolution of the fractal noise that is literally the only thing I've done to it everything else is default value so what I'm going to do is select these three uh, color balance, glow and fractal noise and I'm going to come down to this little uh, brainstorm icon and click and straight away you'll see um, different if by clicking brainstorm down here you will see different possibilities that I can basically just get After Effects to create straight away and say you don't crank the randomness up for extreme fun and we are getting just without doing any work okay a lot of these might not look good but it's usually not long before one comes along which you think you can probably work with look at this this is the joy of uh, experimenting by just clicking button we have a uh, something here and I'm pressing play here but I don't think it's actually going to animate that much purely because of the way this is set out so I'm going to come back and brainstorm some more and okay I say this this is not far from where I want to go so I'm gonna click this which uh, basically is telling After Effects I kinda like these things but bring this down now randomness but can you create me something similar like not a million miles away I might even be tempted to come out this is really quite nice so I'm gonna apply this to composition I might now unselect color balance and then go back in say I like the colors and just uh, keep working with it <laughs> this is actually quite good the anti-aliasing would be a huge problem but um, you know just to, to kind of show that I've literally made no effort and we've got <laughs> it's just an incredibly abstract you know by blurring this out you, you have an incredibly cool animation there and people would be wondering how long it took you to make it and how you did it and you would probably not be able to tell them and the, the great thing about um, the brainstorm plugin is if you come into here select any effect you can actually just select certain parts of a plugin and brainstorm those so as you can see the way this effect is set up it's probably I probably picked some very bad ones but uh, to randomize but if you just want to maybe randomize the colors you just select your color balance um, in here in your effects and then just just randomize those but uh, I'm pretty sure the way this is um, this effect has been set up like like I said obviously I can't tell you how it's been set up uh, this might be completely negating the color uh, like I said I'm not sure how it's been built but uh, just to show you one that I'd made earlier I said I made After Effects made it for me which is awesome uh, it was just a really nice blown out animation with kind of flashes coming in from the side this immediately uh, made me want to turn this into a film burn which I could render out then and use uh, at my leisure really and it could come in as a really useful um, resource for any future things I wanted to make so I can just now can you see we get nice flashes from the side and easily usable as a kind of film burn bolex kind of thing so I could render that out and save it and uh, use it again in another project so there you go that was uh, five quick tips for the price of one and I am sorry I haven't 
done any tutorials more recently. I have done a couple for motion works to be fair. And if you haven't seen those, go on to my site and uh, follow the links from there. So I have got a couple on there if you're one of these people, just follows me maybe on YouTube, uh, go on to my site and follow the link. And if I do do any work or if I see any cool work, I've been uh, tweeting a lot about it, so you can follow me on Twitter, uh, slash Zola85 or at Zola85. And uh, hopefully see you on there. And um, I do my next tutorial, tutorials actually, will be in Cinema 4D, so that should be fun. And uh, I'm going to be tackling one of the biggest uh, subjects that you can in Cinema 4D, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, have fun, keep experimenting, and I'll see you soon.